Roswell Flight Test Crew, here in Atlanta, Georgia for Exponential 2021. And I'm here at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium with Adam Jacob. How you doing, Adam? I'm doing well. Pleasure. Good, good. Now, you're with the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, but we're at a drone conference. What's going on here? Yeah, so NIST has been uh, leading an uh, international effort to develop standard test methods for emergency responders in general. And that's ground robots, that's underwater systems, and it's unmanned aircraft systems, drones. All right, now in the background here, we've got all these buckets set up on the soccer field here. What, what, what's with the buckets? Yeah, so, well, this is a drone uh, specific set of tests, and the buckets are a way to get everyone to be uh, developing their own standards. So, these are standard test methods that are replicated all over the world because they're as simple as buying some buckets, printing out some stickers inside, and looking for all the stickers that you placed in your environment. Got it. So when I go out here and complete this card, do I get like a, a NIST certification that says I'm a, a great drone pilot or how does that work? So NIST does not certify. Uh, NIST does not train. What we do is lead the standards development effort. And then these standards go through ASTM International, uh, Committee on Homeland Security. There is uh, uh, a standards process that we feed uh, and I have to chair that committee. So these are ASTM standards that people can then replicate and set thresholds as they see fit. So everyone can set their own threshold. New York might have a different threshold than Ottumwa, Iowa, but those thresholds can then lead toward credentials provided by other organizations. Got it, got it. Now, do the standards change over time or can you compare one person to the next or how does that work? So the standards, well, once they're standardized, the standards take some care and feeding over time, they can be edited. You know, every five years you need to open them up and make sure they're still right. Uh, we've been validating these tests in particular for the last uh, couple of years. And so uh, they're pretty fully baked. They're going through the standards process now. The power of these standard test methods is that you can compare yourself, your score today, to your score two weeks ago, to your score two weeks hence, right? So the standard test didn't change. Maybe your proficiency changed. And to even measure your proficiency, it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing thing. So the average of your last five flight tests might be a really good indication of your actual proficiency. That number is completely comparable to anyone else who's using the exact same test with the exact same aircraft. Comparable across countries, across time. It doesn't matter where or when you conduct your evaluation. You can then leverage the data coming out of all of those other flight tests. Got it. Now, is it, is it, I mean, we've got a bunch of lanes set up here. Is everybody taking the same test here? Is that how that works? Mm -hmm. So every lane that you see here right behind us are the open test lane. This is the basic course. This is the accompaniment to the part 107 knowledge exam. So this is the skills level course of it. So there's five different flight paths in that test alone. Uh, there's also a lane of obstructed tests along the wall. Those are harder, closer proximity to objects of interest, to walls, to windows, to vehicles, to packages. And that requires you to fly much closer to the world than you're typically comfortable. But they, because of the buckets, allow pilots uh, to feel safe when they're there because the buckets, two buckets, verging to a point makes you know that you're in a safe location. And it allows you to look around, understand your interface, see what distortions are in your field of view, and start controlling for contrast and zoom and working your system more rigorously. Got it. Now, of course, we've had part 107 for a number of years now. Why do we need something like this? <clears throat> well, the 107 was an essential first step. It's a knowledge exam, though. It, it makes sure that people understand where the nearest airport is, a little bit about the national airspace, some weather, some aerodynamics. This is important because this is the practical skills test. So you might be very knowledgeable about the national airspace, but you might be a hazard at the control of a drone. And this test either informs you that you're a hazard or shows you where your weaknesses are until you can rise above a certain threshold that says safe, effective, maybe even great at it, and deployable for an emergency response organization that needs to go into really, really complicated, uh, difficult environments. And then if I am that emergency response organization and I sort of want to bring the rigor and the strength of this testing process, how do I go about that? What's my point of contact? Where do I start? 
So, well, we've made a lot of contact through events like this. You know, it's just a general call to the local police, Atlanta police, Atlanta fires, put out the word, and we have more than 100 people here. Uh, so everyone's kind of craving this notion of standard tests because everyone wants to evaluate themselves and uh, start comparing them. So we filled a void that was absolutely necessary. Um, generally speaking, across the nation, we are helping uh, get these uh, test methods out there through our website uh, because we've been validating that they scale across the country. You know, we go to other countries too. Canada's big in using them, Japan, Germany. But across the United States, uh, there are whole states that have adopted these tests already, helping to validate them along the way. Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, Colorado Department of Public Safety, statewide implementations that show that these standard tests can scale. That's the goal. All right. Well, Adam, thank you so much. Very informative and very interesting. Appreciate your time. Pleasure. And from Exponential 2021 in Hotlanta, Georgia, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off. Thanks again, Adam. Yeah, you're welcome.